Thank you, Lord Jesus, Father, we bless your name. We magnify your name, O oh Lord, for another Sunday. Beloved, you're welcome. If you've seen us from Facebook or YouTube, you're welcome to Jesus Generation Chapel. Father, we bless your name. We magnify you, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We worship your holy name for another day. You're welcome. God bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we glorify you. We exalt your name in the name of Jesus. We thank you, we bless your name. Holy Spirit, take absolute control. In the name of Jesus. Father, we bless your name. Father, we magnify God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we glorify your name. We worship you, God. We exalt your holy name. Father, we glorify your name. In the name of Jesus. We commit every teaching of God we're going to do today to your hand of God. Father, take up soul control. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we glorify you. We magnify you, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we glorify you. We magnify you, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for another day. We bless your name. We magnify you, God, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, come and teach us, O oh God. The Bible says that Jesus came to save, to seek and to save that which is lost. He came for me and you. He came for me and you to save you and I. Therefore, we're just going to delve into the word of God, what God actually you know, has said concerning the reason why Jesus came. He came for me and you. Mandele Babu, Father, we glorify your name. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We adore your holy name. In the name of Jesus. Father, we glorify your name. Father, we worship you. Father, we thank you. Mandele Basuto Babu. Jesus came that you and I will have life and have it more abundantly. We were on our way, according to the scriptures, we were on our way to eternal condemnation. But Jesus came. You know, life is not just what we see today here on earth. There's also aftermath of man's life. There's also after death. You know, your soul will live again. That is the reason why Jesus came, beloved, to save me and you. He came because without him, our sinful nature will lead us to hell. But Jesus came to save you and I. So we thank him, we bless him, we adore his holy name. We exalt his name in the name of Jesus. Father, we glorify your name. Father, we exalt your holy name. Father, we magnify your God. In the name of Jesus, so wherever that you are, if you can see me, I want you to join me as we delve into the word of God, as we get into the reason why Jesus came and also you and I, what we actually 
what actually transpired in our life why Jesus came. So we're just going to delve into it. Holy Spirit, take absolute control. Holy Spirit, we bless your name. We magnify God, exalt your holy name. We worship you, Holy Spirit. We glorify your name in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray. We bring everyone, of oh God, the sound of my voice before you, oh God, that as we get into your word for this Sunday, oh God, let your word come and heal. Let your word, oh God, save us from sinful nature. Father, let your word heal us. Let your word bring comfort. Let your word bring understanding. Father, the Bible says that all have sinned. All of us have sinned and we have, you know, we have come short of the glory of God. That is why Jesus came to save us. All of us have sinned. The Bible makes us understand that none is good. None is good. All have sinned and we have come short of the glory of God. And for Lord, we pray, take absolute control. It says, for all have sinned and we have come short of the glory of God. Beloved, in life we need glory. We need peace. We need understanding. We need the hand of God. When God is in it, your life becomes so beautiful. When we are adhering to the voice of God, when we are living according to the scriptures, the Bible says that you and I are saved. Therefore, I pray right now, as I minister right now online, for our ministry, Jesus Generation Chapel, beloved, wherever that you're going to hear me, you need, this is the most important reason why Jesus came. Without him, oh, beloved, without him, we will try with our effort, we will try with our techniques, we will go on our own way, but it does not help. Therefore, it is my prayer that as the word of God comes unfolding, it will be able to save. The word of God has power to save. It will be able to lead you and I if we are on our way to hell, if we are on our way or we are in sinful nature, it will help us to be able to come back to the Lord. Therefore, Lord, we bless your name. Breathe upon the message. Breathe upon the salvation message. Oh God, that Jesus came to deliver us from sin, to deliver us from death. We pray, oh God, as your word comes, let it be effective. Let it save lives, oh God. That is the reason why the Bible says that it is not the will of God that sinners, man will die in sin. It is not the will of God. It is the will of God that all of us will come to his knowledge. It is his will that all of us will come to know him. Therefore, beloved, as you hear me, if you have not given your life to Jesus, either on Facebook or YouTube, I want you to get ready. I want you to make a decision and give your life to Jesus. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen. Beloved, today our topic is going to be very brief and also very powerful. Our topic, we're going to see why the need for you and I to, you know, to accept the gift of God. The gift of God to mankind is Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that the gift of God to mankind is Jesus Christ. All of us, according to the book of Romans chapter 3, all of us have gone on a wrong way. All of us are, have, you know, we, we, we have chosen the wrong way. All of us have sinned. That is why Jesus had to come to die for me and you. So we're going to dive into the scriptures to prove. The scriptures are the word of God. They are the heart of God. The scriptures are the, the, the mindset of God. The scriptures or the Bible uh, you know, what is inscribed in the Bible is the plan of God. So the plan of God for humanity, that all of us have gone astray, according to the book of Isaiah, it, it, it tells me and you that we are like sheep without a shepherd. Beloved, it's true. No matter what you acquire, educational 
achievements, you know, uh, doing very well in business, uh, enjoying everything that you think, all the pleasures of this world, going to casino, enjoying yourself with women. I mean, just enjoy yourself with wealth. At the end of the day, beloved, what you will lack is Jesus Christ, is eternal life. And beloved, it's only Jesus Christ that can fill the void. We look in life, everyone has been trying to come up with answers. If we look at the pandemic that has hit the whole world, doctors, you know, um, you know, nations with their leaders, presidents, you know, scientists, they are all trying to come up with a solution. But beloved, at the end of the day, the solution is Jesus Christ. The, the solution is God. When we try to take Jesus out of the schools, we try to take Jesus out of the family, we try to take Jesus out of the, you know, of, of the, of, of everything we do, as far as the government system is concerned, as far as the uh, district systems, as far as, you know, the family pattern is concerned, when you take God out, the rest is chaos. The rest is chaos. Beloved, that's why Jesus came, that you and I will be able to find our way back on track for what God designed and planned for man. So we go to the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 23. It tells us that for all of us have sinned, both the Jewish people that God chose them as his own people, they sinned. And the rest of us as Gentiles in the world, we have all sinned against God. Sin is part of us. That is why we needed to be rescued. The meaning of salvation. Let me just explain it in a very small context here. The meaning of salvation is like a whole building that catches fire or gets ablaze, okay? And fire, it's... You know, the building maybe came as a result of a circuit failure or something happened and the whole building is on fire. And then maybe some of us are trapped in it. You see, I'm giving you the reason for the meaning of salvation. We are trapped in the building. If we try to escape, we are either going to suffer with some bands, you know. We're going to get burned by, you know, the fire. We are either going to suffer. So now, what the firemen will do is, they have tools, they have been trained. So the firemen will do their best to try to find the best way to come through the fire to, you know, to, to save those of us that we are trapped by the fire. You see, that's the meaning of salvation. So when the, the firemen come in, and they are able, they are able to save you and I, and we escape from death of this fire outbreak. That means the firemen have saved us. That's the meaning of salvation. The same way we are all entrapped. We have been encircled by sin. We've been encircled by eternal condemnation. So we need somebody to come inside our destruction to come and save you and me. And Jesus responded that, Lord, send me. My Father in heaven, send me, and I'll come and die for mankind. So, beloved, that's the meaning of salvation. Salvation is someone laying their lives down to save you and I from eternal condemnation or from destruction. Maybe, let me give an example. You are in a severe accident and you are on a highway and there's nobody around and maybe you had a serious accident, maybe two of you, and all of you are trapped in the car. And then all of a sudden, God has a way to bring, uh, you know, somebody around to come in. The person that comes around calls emergency 911 and then the, um, the um, ambulance will come or the uh, the, the paramedics will come uh, to to help those of you in the accidents, you know, trapped in the car. That means the paramedics or the person that called the 911 has saved your life because without them, uh, the severity of the accident will cause you to die. Is this like you and me, 
we have been trapped in sin. You and me, we are caught up in sin. So Jesus now comes in, breaks the car, and save me and you. It's the same thing because we do not deal with just our common five senses. We deal with other spirits that cause me and you to be subjected to their will. That will cause me and you to go by our flesh. But the spirit becomes dead. So once we see Jesus, once we are saved again, the Bible says that our spirit man is born again. So beloved, this is the most important message that everybody will need in life before you die. And if we go to Hebrews chapter number 7, I'm running ahead of me. Hebrews chapter number 9, verse 27, it tells us that, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this there is judgment. So beloved, whether you like it or not, one day you and me, it will come to the, the, the last day of our life. Maybe we could grow up to 110 years. We could grow up to 100 years. We could grow up to 85 years. But one day is going to be the last day of your life on earth. And beloved, do you know something amazing? It's only God who knows that day. Oh my God. It's only God who knows that day. The day that you call you or me. Only God knows that day. That's why he has brought Jesus Christ. That you and I will come to the saving knowledge. I love it. Luke chapter 19. Let me see if I can project it here. Luke chapter 19. I love it. I should have brought it here. Luke chapter 19 verse 10. Luke chapter number 19 verse number 10. I believe so. Let's see what the Bible says. You see, it's the popular scripture for this topic. Luke chapter 19, verse number 10. Let me see if I can project it here. Luke chapter number 19, verse 10. We'll tell why Jesus came. I love it. He said, he came to seek and to save which that is lost. I believe I can project it right here in a second. Uh, he came to save. Okay, let's see if we can see right here. Luke chapter 19, verse 10 tells us that for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. Beloved, maybe you are caught up in sin like an accident that you are caught up in a car. Maybe you are caught up in this world like a, a, a huge building, like we all saw what happened in 9-11. Uh, all the fire men, our servicemen were able to go in and save people they were their savior. Maybe you and I are caught up in a huge building in in a huge fire, caught up in fire, you know, and we're looking for somebody to save us from this building. That is the work of Jesus Christ. So the Bible is telling us, let's go back again. The Bible is telling us it is appointed unto man all of us to die once. And after death, there is judgment. That's right, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, after the death, we all have to be judged. Is the judgment is when God comes in and now give, you give account of all that you have done with your body. You give an account of all that you have done with your time. You give an account of all that you have done with your uh, what do you call it, with your treasure. It's three T's. Your time, your treasure, and your um, your time, treasure, and and um, the gift that God has given you. You know, it's three T's. So when God comes, when you and I, when you leave this world, there's judgment. You're going to give an account of what you came to do with your body what you came to do with your time, what you came to do with your will, you see? So after death, there is judgment for every one of us. Now we go to the book of Romans chapter 3, verse number 9 through 12. Let's read it together. Romans chapter 3, verse 9 through 12. 
So we see the work that Jesus has done so that you see that whether you're a Jew or Gentile, all of us need Christ. Whether you're a Jew, that God actually chose the people of Israel, or we the Gentiles around the world and the other religions, we all need Jesus Christ. So let's read from the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 9 to 12. It says, What then are we better than they? No. You see, Paul is writing to the, the Hebrews. Paul says, Are we the Jewish people better than those who were not chosen by God? Paul says, No. In no wise, for we have before proved both Jews and we the Gentiles that they are all under sin. Okay? Even the people of Jew, the Jewish people that God came for them, many of them failed God. So now Paul writing to the Christians in Rome, Paul tells them that both the Jewish people and we the Gentiles have failed God. And you know, since the time of um, all the patriarchs, which is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the 12 tribes, the Bible tells us that they all failed God. They were not able to live up to the standards that God was expecting them because Christ had not come. So now Paul tells us that both the Jews and Gentiles, we have all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous in the book of Isaiah. It says that there is none of us that is righteous. No, not one. Verse 11, there is none that understands. There is none that seeks after God. It came to a time even the children of Israel, they will not seek after God. They will leave God and go and follow some pagan way of life. Okay? Pagan style of worship. And that Paul is trying to tell us that, beloved, without Christ, all of us have sinned before. All of us have broken the law of God. That's why Jesus came, that the law will be taken away, and now you and I will have grace. We have the grace of God to be able to live in Christ and to be born again into the family of God. So now, God has a family that Jesus has named the family the Church of Christ. So I want to ask you, are you part of the Church of Christ? Those of you on YouTube, Facebook, you are listening to me, this is a life issue. Because beloved, I'm going to go to a scripture that will tell us that no, none of us know what will happen tomorrow. None of us know what will happen tomorrow, even just tomorrow. We don't know. Only God knows. That's why God is calling us. That is why God is touching we, the preachers and the teachers, to continue to propagate the gospel online. If it's just physical meeting, online, trying to go for souls that they will be won for his coming. So we see here, then he says, there is none that, with that was seeking after God. They are all gone out of their way. They are together become unprofitable there is none that doeth good, not even one. So, beloved, here the point we learn from here is that maybe you're going to uh, watch me or you're going to listen to this teaching about Christ coming to save you and me. And you're like, okay, Pastor Frank, I am a good person. That's why a lot of Americans and the people around the world, even from my uh, African descent, those of us from Africa, say, oh, uh, I don't cheat. Uh, I'm a good person, I, I love people. Beloved, the Bible is telling me and you that our way of righteousness is like a filthy rag. It's like a filthy rag. It doesn't do anything before God. So Romans chapter 3, from verse 9 through 12, is teaching me and you that none of us was good. All of us have gone astray. None of us could come up to the standard of God. That is why... God had to send Jesus Christ to come and die for our sin. For Jesus Christ to come and die for our sins. So the book of Romans 3, 9 through 12 is telling us that none of us is good, beloved. That is why, you see, God is giving us the opportunity. It's not just going to church, but 
accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and walking with him. You see, walking with him, allowing Jesus to live his life in your life, accepting him and walking with him and allowing the Holy Spirit actually to live your life for you. So, beloved, this is a very important teaching. It's a very important subject. Jesus came to save us from sin and death, to save us from sin and death, so that any time your time comes, you are ready to be transitioned from this life into eternity, to spend eternity with Christ. So we look at uh, Joshua chapter 24, verse 15. I love what Joshua said. We're still on the subject of the fact that you and I need to secure our life. You and I need to accept Jesus Christ. You and I need to get hold of the salvation that we have received from Christ. Not to play with it, but to live according to the will of God. I think John chapter 14 verse 15, Jesus told the disciples, Jesus said, if we love him, we should obey his commandments. If we love him, we should obey his commandments. That means anything Jesus said we shouldn't do, we must not do by the help of the Holy Spirit. Anything Jesus said we should do, we must do. He said, if you love me, obey my commandments. So Joshua chapter 24 verse 15 is also part of the salvation message that Jesus came to save me and you. He says that, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Joshua told the people of Israel, he said, you are torn in between. Today you go to the club, the next day you go sin, the next day you come and, 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 and atone for your sins. And so Joshua was just telling them that today you go uh, around the Baal worshippers and go do what they're doing, the next day you come back. So Joshua came and stood before the people of Israel and said, Choose ye this day who you want to serve. He said, Choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So God is asking me and you, he said, we should choose today who we want to serve. He said, choose you this day who you want to serve. Now we are presenting Christ to you. We are presenting our Father in heaven to you. We are presenting the Holy Spirit to you. He said, choose who you want to serve. Because beloved, today, it's so amazing that today, many people that have been saved through the blood of Jesus are confused. You see, we are doing the same thing that the people of Israel did. We are confused. We go and serve the gods of America. We go and serve the things of this world. We go and serve the same pattern of this world. And then after that Sunday, we come and serve God. He said, choose you this day whom you're going to serve. But Joshua said, as for me and my household, we shall serve the Lord. Beloved, I believe, as for me and my family, I want me and my children, I want us to serve the Lord. As for me and my family, we want to serve the Lord because there is a day of reckoning. There is a day coming that you and I, we are going to need Christ. We're going to need Christ. So he said, choose you this day whom you will serve. So we go to First Kings chapter 18 verse 21 also tells us that. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long, uh, how long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if thou, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Why? Because this was a time of Jezebel, the witch woman, who was controlling um, um, uh, uh, Ahab. Was he controlling the whole king? And this, uh, this witch woman, Jezebel, brought all the kind of, uh, you know, idol worship 
into Jerusalem and she controlled everything. And so God called Elijah and Elijah pronounced, you know, a kind of famine that there's not going to be a deal, there's not going to be rain. And the Bible says that after that, before that, Elijah challenged them. You see, Elijah challenged them that the people of Israel, some of you are torn into two opinions. So Elijah told them that, why are you torn into two opinions? The Lord, if God is God, follow him. And if Baal is the one you want to follow, follow Baal. It's the same question to you, beloved, if you are listening to me. Are you ready to serve this world? Are you ready to serve the way of the enemy satanic activities? Are you ready to give up to your passion, sinful lifestyle, or you're ready to run to Jesus? For Jesus to save you and me, for Jesus to touch our lives. It's two opinion. Today, many people are confused. People don't know whether to serve God or to serve their flesh. People are confused. But I come to you with all meekness, with all simplicity of this gospel. That choose today who you want to serve. Joshua asked the people of Israel. Elijah asked them. He said, choose today who you want to serve. That is why God always instructs us. Those of us who have studied, those of us who have been trained, those of us... We have served the Lord for a while now. God tells us every day to preach the salvation message. To preach so that we can win many to his kingdom. Beloved, this is a very important decision. Maybe you, all, you might be watching uh, me on YouTube or Facebook. Or you will come to uh, this teaching later on. You ask yourself. You are torn between two opinions. Are you going to serve God or are you just going to serve this world? Are you just going to go by the passions of this world? Or you're going to respond to the call and the gift of God in the person of Jesus Christ so that you are saved? I love it. I didn't bring the scripture here. When Paul and Silas in the book of Acts chapter 16, when they were arrested because they cast out a sorcerer, a woman that was after them every day said, these are the men of God. And Paul cast the spirit out of her. The Bible tells us that they were in prison. They were put in jail. But the Bible says that after that, Paul and Silas, in Acts chapter 16 from verse 25, Paul and Silas began to worship God. They began to serve the Lord in worship and psalms and praises. And the Bible says that the, the, the prison yard the whole foundation shook and they were set loose. And the Bible says that the God decided to kill himself. And I love it. In Acts chapter 16, verse 30 and 31, Paul said, do not kill yourself. Maybe you are listening to me. Life is not fair. Maybe you, you are down. You don't know. You feel like you, you are not alive anymore. No, there is much hope for you. You see, you can come back to Jesus. Jesus can give you another life. Jesus can save your life. Jesus can turn your life around. So Paul asked the God and said, don't kill yourself. But Paul said, believe in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And you and your household shall be saved. You and your household shall be saved. Beloved, the main reason why Jesus came is not to condemn this world. The time of condemnation will come. The time of punishment will come at the end of everything. But he came not to condemn the world, but to bring his saving power, his saving knowledge to this world. So beloved, if you hear this message, I hope I can, you know, you know, sponsor it so that it can reach a lot of people. Because beloved, today many people are going to church, but they are not saved. Many people are torn in between two opinions. Many people are confused. They don't know what to do. That is why God wants us to bring the simplicity of the salvation knowledge of Christ to you. So the Bible says, Elijah, Elijah asked the people of Israel, he said, do you want to serve Baal or you want to serve God? Now I'm 
God is asking you and I the same question. Do you want to serve God or you want to serve back? God is asking us the same question. So we go to our next scripture, Proverbs 27, verse 1. Why do you have to see that this is a very important decision? Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1 tells me and you about Jesus coming to save you and me from eternal condemnation. It tells us that boast not thyself of tomorrow. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. Because we all do not know what tomorrow holds for us. We know God is going to keep us. We know we are alive. We know we are not going to die. We know God has uh, kept us. But the question is, beloved, the Bible is saying that do not boast yourself of tomorrow. For you knoweth not what a day may bring forth. You and I don't know what a day may bring forth. We cannot boast of tomorrow because tomorrow belongs to God. To only God knows tomorrow. You and I do not know tomorrow. So beloved, the message is coming to me and you. Are you born again? Are you saved? Are you just attending church? Are you just confused in life? Then I would love that you confess your sins to Christ or rededicate your life again to Jesus Christ so that we come back again so that Jesus Christ dwells in us the Holy Spirit dwells in us and the Holy Spirit begin to shape in our life begin to guide our life we find a good church so now progress is saying that tomorrow does not belong to you that is why salvation message is so important beloved in life, Solomon even talks about it. He said, it is good to know the Lord. He said, the duty of man, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13, the whole duty of man is for me and you to obey God and live by his commandments. It's to fear God and live by his commandments. That's the whole reason why we are alive. So, beloved, if it comes to you and I, and at the end of the day, when it is the last part of your life, then you ask yourself, have you been able to make this decision? Have you given your life to Jesus? If not, then the Bible is telling me and you that we cannot boast ourselves for tomorrow. For we don't know what tomorrow or a day has for us. We don't know what tomorrow or a day has for us. That is why he's reminding us again, I quoted the scripture, Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 tells us that as and as it is appointed unto men once to die and after death there is judgment. Beloved, it's not just that you're just going to die and you are okay. I used to ask people, some Americans, when I picked them up, I've asked both whites and, uh, and, and blacks, and I asked them, I said, what do you think happens to us when a person dies? And many people believe in science. Many people believe that when I die, I am part of the environment. That's, that's the answers people give, that when I die, I am part of the environment. So people think when they die, they will go to the earth, when they buried and turn and turn into uh, what do you call it a living organism or something to bring growth to the earth, and I told them that that's not true because you are a spirit, you have the spirit of God in you, and you have a soul which is your feeling, which is your 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 your, your ego, which is your mind, which is your will. That's your soul. God has given his spirit in us. So we have a will, we have man, we have soul, okay? We have that soul, and that soul controls the body. So anything the soul feels, the body feels. Anything the body feels, the soul feels. But we have the third part of you, that is from God. That is the spirit of God. The Bible says in the book of uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, the Bible says that God created man in his own image and God breathed into the nostrils of man. He breathed his spirit into the nostrils of man 
a man became a living soul man had a feeling in the body so every one of us has the spirit of god in us one day god is going to require your spirit he gave it to you before you were born before you were formed in your mother's womb so one day god is going to require that spirit from you so he's saying that once a man dies or a woman dies there is going to be a judgment the judgment will go jesus said it will even start in the house of god peter told us you see so everybody whether you are a pastor a deacon you are a new convert you just became a christian or you are not a christian every one of us will go through the judgment of god so you ask yourself you say after death there is going to be judgment after death there is going to be judgment so that is why you and i so we go to Isaiah chapter 55 verse 6 tells us that seek the lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near beloved god is not going to give you this chance forever every day the holy spirit is around you saying change your life allow jesus to live your life for you saying change from your old ways say that give your life to jesus even holy spirit is in this world to convict sinners so sometimes a sinner does something wrong and they feel within themselves like oh they feel they will stop it's not their feeling it's the holy spirit that sends that message that where you're going is eternal destruction. Your life is filled with mess. So come back to God. So that is why even people who uh, will go like armed robbery, people who will go commit suicide and so many, or homicide or whatever, they commit other atrocities. At the end of the day, they are confused. They are messed up. They are not of themselves because the Holy Spirit is around every sinner. To convict them that what you're doing will lead you to eternal damnation. So come back to God. Come back to God. So the Bible is saying right here that you and me must seek God whilst he's near us. We must get back to him whilst he may be found. When we look for him, we cry to him, he will save us. And it says that we should call upon him whilst god is near so no matter where you are no matter what sin that you have committed god is close to you god is still speaking to your heart god wants you to give your life to him no matter what we have done we have the opportunity to ask for the forgiveness of our sins so that we come back to the saving knowledge of jesus christ because he came to save us from sin and death he came to save us from sin and death so the bible is saying that we should call god whilst god is around us and also whilst we he will be found by us we should call god and then we go to the book of isaiah chapter 55 and 6 the bible says Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he's near. And we move to Matthew chapter 24, verse 44. Matthew chapter 24, verse 44. So, beloved, I'm still speaking on the salvation of Christ, saving us, Jesus saving us from sin and death. From sin and death. Uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 44 says, Therefore, be also ready in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man cometh. Beloved, Jesus Christ will come again. Jesus Christ will come back again. We will be caught up according to the book of Thessalonians, uh, the church from Thessalonica. Paul wrote to them about the end time and the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus one day jesus will come back again christians will be caught up in in heaven with him which is called rapture means you are caught up okay we're caught up in heaven and we'll go and spend eternity with him and before 
the that's what some school of thoughts believe before the tribulation begins others also believe that the moment tribulation begins then we will be caught up so whichever one whether we're going to be caught up before tribulation or to be within tribulation that we are caught up uh there are school of thoughts it's all in in the hands of jesus christ jesus said i'll come back again john chapter 14 jesus told his disciples i'm going to a place and prepare a place for you. He said, after that, I'll come back again and I will receive you to myself and where I am, that's where you're going to go. So Jesus was telling them that the hour that man does not expect, that's when he's going to come. So when we don't think something is going to happen, that's where it comes. When you don't think your time is ending, that's what is going to happen. So it's good, beloved, I always say, it's very good that you actually prepare yourself. Prepare yourself before you die. Prepare yourself before you die. I know we don't know the time Jesus is going to come. We don't know the time God is going to come. But beloved, every day we hear people dying. Every day we hear people, even coronavirus, so many things have happened. So God wants us to prepare ourselves before your end or the day come. But Jesus says, I will come when no man expects me. Beloved, that is the reason why you need to give your life to Jesus. This is the reason why you and I need to give our life to Jesus. Luke chapter 12, verse 19 to 20 tells us that, And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. And God said unto him, Thou, O a fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? Beloved, what Christ is teaching us here is that we shouldn't depend on our wealth. We shouldn't depend on our achievements. We shouldn't depend on our academic achievements. We shouldn't depend on our investments. What God is saying that this is a rich man that is called the rich fool. It's a parable uh, that Jesus was teaching about that a rich man that God bless him so much, but he will not give his attention to God. He will not. Uh, he will not hear God. He will not allow God to uh to manage his affairs but the bible says that one night the rich man thought he has acquired a lot he thought oh i have wealth i have a food in my barns i have everything around me then god says okay you have been able to achieve all these things but you are you 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 are denying me helping you to acquire these things so god told him and god said tonight when you go to sleep, I will take your life from you. So Jesus is saying that we should not depend on our achievements. We should not depend on our wealth. We should not depend on the things in this world. Because one day, God is going to call you. One day, God is going to take your life from you. Beloved, that is why we need the Savior. That is why we need God. That is why we need the Holy Spirit. That is why we need our Savior Jesus to come in and save us. Because one day our wealth and all the buildings that we have acquired, the money at the bank, one day you will leave it behind. But the good news is if you are prepared, you have nothing against anybody serving God, forgive people, serve God, preach about the salvation, work with Christ, then the Bible says that you are going to be saved. You are going to be saved because your wealth cannot save you. Your achievement cannot save you. Only Christ will be able to save you. We go to Acts chapter 22, verse 16. The Bible says that, and now, why tarrieth thou? Arise and be baptized, 
and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So now we see the book of Acts is telling us that now the message is coming to you and you're not saved. The Bible is saying that now rise up, rise up, and that your sins will be forgiven, that you will be baptized in the power and the blood of Jesus. He said, now confess Christ, your sins will be given, and you will be baptized so that you can be saved. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, For he had made him to be sent for us. Jesus, who didn't know sin, had been made to be sent for me and you, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Beloved, that means you and I, there is nothing we can do. You and I, we cannot live up to the standard. That is why we need Christ. That is why we need him. You see, the Bible says that Jesus became sinful, that you and I, our sins will be forgiven. Jesus came that our sins will be forgiven because, beloved, you and I, when we are left alone, we will sin. When we are left alone, we don't have the strength. See, that's why we need the Savior. Not just going to church, but giving your life to him, having a close I close contact with Jesus and allowing Jesus to have that relationship with you to take absolute control over your will, over your emotion, over your heart, so that Jesus comes in and help you and I. Why? Because he did not sin, but God saw Jesus as sinful so that you and I, our sins will be forgiven that we will be called the righteousness of God. The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So once all that we have to do is to confess Christ, all that we have to do is to accept Jesus Christ. And that's all. No matter what we have done, God will forgive us. And then God will say, you know what? Now I see you as a righteous person. Now I see you as a righteous child of God. All that we have to do is a decision to allow Jesus to forgive our sins so that we become the righteousness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the Bible says that Jesus didn't know any sin, but he's been made sinful for you and I, 2 Corinthians 5.21. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2 says, For he said... I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Beloved, anytime you hear this teaching, anytime you hear a man of God talking about salvation, you do not put it on hold. You want to make a decision. You want to think about it. If you know you are not saved, if you know you are just going to church, if you know you are just joining the choir, if you know you are just playing church, it's a time that you just take a stock of your life and allow Jesus into your life. Because he said the acceptable day is today. He said, behold, today is the acceptable day if you have heard about the salvation message. He said, today. So maybe you are going to hear it tomorrow, which will be your today. Maybe you're going to hear it today, which will be your today. Maybe you're going to hear it two days from now, which will be your today. So the Bible says that now is the acceptable time. Don't procrastinate. Don't, uh, uh, don't put it on hold. So we look at Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 18 and 19. Why? Why do we have not to put it on hold? I'm bringing it to a close soon. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 18 says, When I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and I giveth him not warning, nor speaketh to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thy hand. So what God is saying is that 
Christians, we must warn unbelievers every day. We must tell them every day. God says if we do not do that, he will require their blood from us. God is going to ask, we the Christians, those of you who are saved, God will ask you why you didn't tell other people about the salvation of Christ, about the salvation, the gift of God. God says if we do not tell them, then we are going to be held responsible. I told you I was doing the series of sin, and I said it will lead us why we were so sinful, we don't have any power to be able to stand. Why? Because we need a helper. We need a savior. We need an element, a blood to atone for our sins. You see, and that's why we're talking about Jesus came to save, to seek you and me and to save us. We were all sinners. He came to save us from the power of sin. And then he says, verse 19, after we have won the wicked, God says they might accept him and we will not be held responsible. Those of us, we have been saved. We will not be held responsible. Verse 19, yet if thou won the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered your soul. So it's a work, a job that Christians have to do, we have to tell our friends, we have to tell sinners. Anybody who doesn't have to know Jesus, we have to tell them that there is a salvation free gift of God for them to give their life to Christ. We have to keep on telling them every day. We have to warn them. We have to love them. Okay? And tell them that without Christ and you die, you will not, uh, you will not enjoy your aftermath of this life you will not enjoy your life forever so you and i need jesus so that when it is your time from here you will be able to live with god forever and ever I'm bringing it to a close so ezekiel is teaching us that there is a task for you as a christian there is a task for me as a christian to tell the world about the eminent danger about eminent life threat that means you can die at any time without you knowing but after death there is judgment so we should warn them and then we go to ezekiel 321 our work is not just to warn the wicked or sinners but god wants us to live according to his standards by the holy spirit after we have come to him and look at what god is saying again another job we have to do is he said, nevertheless, if thou want the righteous man, that the righteous sin not, and he does not sin, he shall surely live, because he's warned, and also thou hast delivered thy soul. So when you are a preacher, when you are a teacher, when you are an evangelist, when you are a prophet, all the five offices, our job is to warn ourselves, to help God that we live according to the salvation power of Christ and the Holy Spirit. Number two job, number one is ourselves. You have to make sure that Paul says, I've preached to you, I don't want to be a castaway. So we also have to warn ourselves that we don't get into sin, you don't live in sin. And number two, God wants us to go to the world and warn the sinners. Because he woke up. One day the world we see today will not be the same. And then number three, God wants us to warn the righteous. Because every now and then, righteous people also fall into sin. But God wants us to warn them and say that let's get out of that so that we are not cast away. So Ezekiel 3, 21 because of time, I will bring it to close right now. So right now we're going to read, read, read. I can't bring all the scriptures. There are many of them. Now we're going to look at what Christ has done. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10. This is how a sinner, or even if you want to rededicate your life. Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. We read, it said that if thou shalt confess... Let me read from my computer here. He said, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in your heart 
that God has raised him before the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with your heart a man believes unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. So I'm going to lead you, anyone that, will, that sees me, if you have not given your life to Jesus, or if you're just going to church without really walking with Christ and leading your life as a Christian, as a believer, I want you to pray this prayer with me. This is what God gave Paul to give to the Christians in Rome. I want you to pray this prayer with me. And he said, he said, Dear Lord Jesus, your word tells me that I cannot save my life. Your word says that all of us have sinned and we have come short of the glory of Jesus. So say it after me if you want to accept Jesus. If you are watching me on Facebook or YouTube, just say it after me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, your word says that I cannot save myself. But it tells me that if I will confess you, Jesus, with my mouth, that you are Lord and my Savior, and I will believe in my heart that God has raised you from the dead. The Bible says that I will be saved. So I want you to say that, dear Lord Jesus, today I confess you into my life. I ask you that you forgive me all the sins that I've committed. I pray that you come into my life to save me and be the Lord of my life. I believe you from my heart and I confess my sins from my mouth that you have died, you have been raised, and you have come, you have torn work on the cross of Calvary, you have come to save my life. So I receive you and I know I am born again. My sins have been forgiven and now I am free. Say the Holy Spirit come into my life, be the Lord and the Savior and the anointing over my life to help me to run this Christian life. Beloved, if you have said this confession with me or you look on the, on the screen, Romans 10, 9, 10, then the Bible says you are born again. You are born again. If you are listening to me, you can also pray and say, Dear Lord Jesus, I've attended church for so many years, but I've been playing church. I've not actually walked with you. I'm not really born again. I'm living in sin. So I rededicate my life back to you. Save me, dear Lord Jesus. Turn my life around. Holy Spirit, give me the power over sin. Thank you, Jesus, for regenerating and touching my life once again. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Beloved, bring it to an end. The message was Jesus came to save you and me from sin and death. It's only Christ who can save us. So beloved, if you are around Colombia and now I'm doing online service because of the COVID, you can follow me. My page is Osofo Frank Owusu. Osofo in our language is pastor. O-S-O-F-O -O, space Frank space Owusu. You can follow me or like my page on uh, O S O F O space Frank space Owusu. O W U U S U. You can like the page so that any teachings that are coming from our ministry will be able to get to you. And beloved, if you are somewhere else, you are not around Columbia area, um, Laurel area, and around this area, find a church that you can be part of it. May the Lord bless you. I hope this message has blessed you. We thank God. Shall we all share the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen and amen. Beloved, God bless you. God willing, on Wednesday, we'll continue with our teachings, online teachings uh, about Bible, uh, teachings about the parable of Jesus. So God bless you. If you're on Facebook, you can. Um, 
you can you can uh, hit a like or you can just follow me facebook and also youtube god richly bless you i hope this message work in our lives like never before amen so bye bye to everybody bye bye we love you with the love of the lord amen Jehovah.